Um, I'm going to go ahead and get us started on our agenda to try to keep us um, on track at 610. That's our goal. Um, and um, to get started, uh, we have a couple of board me members that couldn't make it tonight. Um, we're starting to use the hashtag WIVLA event season because there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't normally do as much of the announcements as I'm going to do tonight, but I'm going to um, pinch hit um, for a person or two. So off we go here. Um, normally, I ask someone else to read the mission statement, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, just to reorient us to our mission, it's always a good reminder. Wivla's mission is to provide an inspiring forum for women to explore and advance their creative development, to promote their work in the marketplace, and to infuse the community with their spirit of cooperation and invention. Um, we are currently, yes, we are, um, we're currently in our season of, um, of inviting people to consider being on the board. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, um, we have two year term limits. So there's always some change. There's always some freshness. Um, it's, it's in our bylaws that we invite, um, newer members so that the energy stays fresh and that we can keep doing those things I just read in the mission statement with a spirit of invention and cooperation. And I can tell you that this board is dynamic and well-rounded and fun to be a part of. So if that's something you want to do, um, I'll put my email address in the chat. Susan Salter, the vice president, and I, I'm Brooke, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are um, heading up those efforts along with um, a past president with some good guidance um, to help build the, the board prospects for next year. And then members will have the opportunity to vote on that, um, I believe in December, but we'll start getting that out to give people time to consider. But if you want to be on the board, now's the time to speak up and raise your hand. Um, and we'll let you know what positions are available and where you might fit best. Okay. Um, the next thing um, up on this little agenda is membership. So Melissa. Yes. Hello, hi Jane. Yes, okay. I'm Melissa Chambers, uh, membership director and welcome everyone. Uh, excited to hear, Laura, what you're going to share with us today. That's super exciting to have you here. Thank you. And I'm pretty sure that I saw Catherine McDaniel in the list. And Catherine, if that is you, you're fairly new. I think you joined just in the early October. So everybody, let's give a little warm welcome to Catherine. Let's see, now i got to change my hey. arrows to find yeah, you. Thank you. There you are. Yeah, I did a I did a talk last year. I think it was last July, and then uh, last year was a real rough year for me. I had lots of <laughs> medical issues, and I'm getting back to life again. So I was like, oh, it's time to jump back mm -hmm. in. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Well, welcome to the call tonight. Thank you. It's always exciting to see new faces. So, speaking of new faces and getting to know each other, hopefully. Hopefully everyone knows that we have a big event on October 24th. It's our 30th anniversary at uh, down at Christ Church Cathedral in the Cloister Gallery. And if you haven't already RSVP'd, um, it is a free event, but that would be so helpful if you would go online, look under events or look on the calendar, find the 30th and um, an RSVP, just so we make sure that we've got everybody covered with food and drink and name tags and all those good things. So that would be very, very appreciated. And um, I think we're still looking for some volunteers to, to um, help kind of strike the, the party when we need to leave and clean up the room. Uh, you can also find ways to sign up online or just hang around that night and help us out. If uh, you know, you want to play it by ear, we'll always take all hands on deck, um, you know, to close up the, the, the church and help them get all set up because they've got you know people who come in the 
the very next morning to do things. So um, let's see, what else do I need to talk to you guys about? Oh, all of us, myself included, hand raised, it would be so great to update our profiles on the website just so people can know who the members are. Uh, it was so helpful during finding uh, partners for the collaboration this year. Like you could go on their profile and go, oh, yeah, she's visual or no, she's literary. So things like that really helped to go update the profile. And I think that's it for me. So, Brooke, back to you. Yeah, um, there's a couple of things we added to the agenda um, uh, last second uh, or last minute, maybe. Um, one is about the anniversary event. You may or may not have participated in our adornment um, activity that we did where um, uh, folks added pearls to different things like hats or a pen or a scarf. I don't know what all you would bedazzle with pearls. Anything goes. Um, but even if you didn't participate in that event, you could do that on your own and wear those things to the party. So that that was kind of the um, one of the reminders, like whether you participated in that or not, bring your pearled up uh, accoutrement, <laughs> your accessories, um, and wear them to the party. Um, and there'll also be other, other opportunities to wear those things later, which Ellen will speak to. Um, and the other thing is when you arrive to the party, um, make sure you go to the welcome table and get your name tag and get checked in because there are some things, there's a look, some information about what all's going on that night. We don't want you to miss out on anything. Mm -hmm. yep. So make sure yeah, you check sure. in. All right. So you know what? one more thing, Brooke, on yes. that uh -huh. is, um, uh, now and then I'll get some questions about parking. And if anyone's familiar with Christ Church, I believe it's Texas Street, right across from the church, mm -hmm. is a parking garage. And they'll make sure and have that open and available to us. Um, if you're required to take a ticket, sometimes they leave the arm up, sometimes they don't. But if you are required to take a ticket, no problem, take it. And then they'll um, you know, validate it at, at the party. So there is free parking in that parking garage that's across the street. And I think what, what usually happens too is like, even if you take a ticket, the arms might be open yeah. when you leave. So that's, I think exactly. that's usually for parties this size, that'll, that'll be what happens. So we don't have any bottleneck trying to get yeah. out of the garage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think like, I don't want to be too uh, persnickety. But it's um, San Jacinto is the Thank road you. where the parking garage is. I only know because I worked there for three years. So I parked in that pretty regularly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next up on our member um, announcements is Margo. Margo, take it away. So basically um, for the newsletter, just, you know, send me your information. You can send it to the Google Drive, or I'll put my email address in the in the chat. You can send things to my email uh, email address, and we still need pearls of Wivla. And so, basically, for the for the new people, you just send me a picture of yourself wearing pearls of some kind. Oh, I can do that. It can be wow. Beautiful. It can be silly. It can be whatever you like, and just a, a short paragraph about. If you've been in Wivla for a while, you can put, you know, why you like being a member of Wivla or what Wivla has done for you. If you're a new member, you can kind of say what got you here and and what you hope to what you hope to get um, out of Wivla. It really is a great organization, and and the people are are fantastic. So, anyway, I hope to have, to hear from y'all. Any anything else I need to mention, Brooke? Um. That's the only one I have on that list. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Thanks Margo. Um, and um, Marie and Shirley are visual co-chairs. Neither one of them could be here tonight. So that's why I'm picking up the mic again on their behalf. Um, our collaboration is up in the North Gallery at Sabine Street. So 
if you were not able to attend our reading, you still have time to go see our work. It's incredible. And it's in, it's up until November 2nd. So uh, make sure you head over there and check it out before that show goes down. I found it very inspiring. <laughs> All right, and then um, I'm going to pitch it over to Ellen for and Rebecca for our literary arts update. Yes, very exciting month of November. If you're literary in any way, shape, or form, I hope you are writing. And even as we speak, keep writing uh, because we have two events this month. One is my favorite um, that touches my heart the most, and that is Haunted Holidays on November 9th. We do that at uh, Brazos Bookstore, so it's in person. Um, it's in the evening, so it'll get dark and, spare, and scary and all that kind of stuff. Um, with five minutes uh, to read, you can read poetry or prose, uh, but, you know, try to see if you can scare us or, you know, some kind of haunted story um it's all possible it's all possible so that's uh that's the funnest one for me and the other one is november 19th our next member meeting is when we will that in november we do our literary meeting and and all we do is sit around and listen to the pearls of wisdom that people write um and share and again the theme is pearls because it's within keeping of the 30th anniversary. Um, and you can write a poem. You can write prose. Five minutes is your deadline. And, and Margo is very strict about that. So uh, she's the one with the stop sign that she raises up when it's time. Um, anyway, what I also want to add to November 19th, uh, whether you are reading something or whether you are just coming in to listen to, again, our pearls of wisdom, um, you should be adorning yourself with your pearl accou accoutrements. Um, and that can, and remember, we're just seeing this much, much of each, each other on the 19th. And um, so, you know, tiaras with pearls in them um you know gaudy earrings with pearls necklaces i mean just you can you know glue them to your face i don't care have fun and uh have pearls on in some form or fashion um and if you have not signed up to read yet we have a we have a few spaces left for both readings, both for the November 19th reading and also for the Haunted Holidays. We we need some more spooky writers uh, to join us. It's just a few slots we have open. So please go to the website, go to the calendar, click on the event, and you will be able to sign up. Any questions? See you then. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm going to pitch it over to Margo to introduce Laura and our fabulous presentation tonight. Oh, I was also going to, to remind people, <clears throat> excuse me, before you go to the calendar to sign up for things, you need to log in. Oh, yeah. So you go to our website, you go to um, click on members. And then there's there's a login. And so if you need to create a, a password, you just say something like forgot password and then you know the website will lead you through the process. Okay. Thank oh, you. Oh, also, that also we got a we couple need, more. Yeah. We also need to mention that we do have a workshop coming up with Kelly Ann Ellis. Yeah. I've been calling her Kelly Ann Conway, but no, she's not that. Uh oh. Kelly Ann Ellis on Sunday, October the twenty seventh I think it's two to five but it's on editing your work and she does she does really great workshops so it's on zoom you will definitely want to be there when's the okay, workshop so. on ghost stories oh and then the, yeah and then there's one this coming uh Sunday from one to three through um the ecrastic review and it's on getting ideas to write 
ghost stories. Whoa. So if you need to write something for our haunted holidays, that's a great workshop. And Lorette, Lorette, who is the editor of Ecrastic Review, her degree is in art history. Mm -hmm. And so she always picks these very wonderful, unusual pieces of art. She talks about the history and then she gives us prompts and uh, and we write and it's uh, it's great fun. So the registration for that you'll find on the October newsletter because it won't be on the Wibla ca calendar. Um, it is. I put it there. You put it on the calendar. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The other thing I did not say was I wanted to uh, throw this over to Rebecca. Did I forget anything or was there anything else you wanted to add? No, I think you covered it all. Good. Okay. All right. I didn't cover it all. <laughs> this just in. <laughs> um, tomorrow night, there is a um, an art opening at the University of Houston's MD Anderson Library. The show is Nevertheless, She Persisted, and it is, um, uh, the opening re reception is tomorrow night from 5 to 7 p.m., and registration is required. Um, the reason that we are bringing it up is because Wivla's art, some of Wivla's archived items from that library are part of that exhibit. Oh, nice. So you'll want to get get over there and check that out. The show um, is up. We got to see it when we visited the archives when we were preparing for the 30th anniversary. Um, so it's up now through May 31st, but tomorrow is the opening. So you might want to check that out. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you for mentioning that, Brent. Uh, Brent. Uh, <laughs> and then the only other event is... The 8th of December is the holiday party. So, you know, save the date on your calendars. Um, event season will roll all the way through December and we don't want to miss a chance to see your face. Oh, no. Oh, and, and Lane, thank you so much for showing us your chest. That was delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. coincidental that I pulled that T-shirt out of my drawer this morning. That is awesome. Can you show us again? I missed it. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Nice. I was reading and I missed it. That is perfect. That is great. Or it is meant to be. <clears throat> okay. I met Laura Pena years ago. I don't even remember how we met. I think it was probably at Archway, uh, the Archway Readers. And I've always been a big fan of, of Laura's. She's um, She is one of a kind. She's very creative. Oh. She's a little on the spooky side, which is very <laughs> exciting. And um, she's she has written one of my very favorite poems of all time. And I, I'm sure I'm getting the title wrong. Um, is it Madonna's Ass? Is that the title? Uh, Madonna's yeah. Ass. And <laughs> it's it's very inspiring because it's it's a person. I, I'm going to say it's a per, persona poem, but it's really snubbing its nose at people who um, have low, lower expectations for older women. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. basically says, screw yeah. you. I'm going to do my thing. I don't care what you say. So anyway, I'm, I'm really excited right. that she's here. All right. So Laura is, uh, I'm going to read from her bio, is an award-winning poet born and raised in Houston. She holds an MA in English literature and a, a BA and an MA in education. She is pri uh, a primary bilingual teacher as well as a translator of poetry into Spanish. Laura has been featured a uh, featured poet at Valley International Poetry Festival, Imprint First Fridays and Public Poetry. She's been published both in print and online journals. She's been a workshop presenter in the Rio Grande Valley and People's Literary Festival in Corpus Christi, Texas. One of Laura's annual traditions is to write a poem a day for August Postcard Poetry Festival and has participated in the fest for the last 12 years. So take it away, Laura. 
Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am so happy to be here. Thank you, Margo, uh, for that introduction. So yes, I have been a participant of the Postcard Poetry Festival for the last 12 years. Um, I don't even remember exactly how I found it. I think I was just searching something online or somebody mentioned something about writing a poem on a postcard and I looked it up and I came across this website and the founders and I signed up. And what it is, is um, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, I didn't put this on there, but what it is, is that you uh, you sign up for the festival and you get a list. I don't know if you ever can see it. This is all my sloppiness. But basically, you sign up on this list and you get a list of 32 names. One of the names is yours. So what you do is um, you can start it as early as July and you write a poem a day on a postcard and you send it off to the people on your list. And since I participated in this festival for the last 12 years, I have gotten postcards from all over the world, from as far away as Japan, um, Germany, France, and they're really lovely and they're beautiful uh, postcards. Some people, they uh, they can do, you know, they do a little bit of everything, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. And if at any time y'all want to ask me questions, you know, just tell me and I'll pause a little bit and I'll answer um, any questions that you may have. Uh, let me go to... Where is it? Hold on one second, because I just had it. Let me go back to my my slides. I have, for some reason, all of this got knocked out. <laughs> and we just did this a little bit ago. Here we go. I got it now. OK, uh, so let me share my screen with you all. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes, looks good. Yes. Awesome. I'll go ahead and give it. So yes, yeah, so this is the short form of poetry postcards. And just a very, very brief, quick thing. I did a whole, uh, when I presented this workshop before, I had a whole little history that I delved into because I wanted to find out like when exactly postcards were started being sent. And postcard production takes off in the United States in the late 1800s to early 1900s. And the postcard is a quick and easy way for individuals to send short notes and to communicate with one another. Uh, so that's kind of where, you know, postcards, if, if you want to go back into the history of, of early postcarding in the United States, it goes back as the late 1800s. So like roughly the late 19th century to early 20th century. Um, okay, so to get started. So what is exactly the postcard poem? Well, um, it is what it says. You get a postcard. It can be postcards about anything at all. And you look at the postcard and you can take your inspiration from what's on the postcard. Or you can take an inspiration from songs, um, the senses, films, art, uh, other poets or writers and, or photographs. And you think about what you want to write. Uh, you can think of a theme for a larger collection. The reason I, I include uh, Van Gogh's portrait here is because one year I, I did an entire series of postcard poems based on Vincent Van Gogh's uh, paintings. The, it was the year that uh, Van, there were, they had the Van Gogh exhibit at the MFA. And so in the, in the gift shop, I'm like, this is a perfect... Uh, postcard project this year. So I bought a, a pack of postcards of, of Van Gogh's uh, paintings and I wrote uh, a short poem about his, uh, about inspired by by his artwork. Um, and that is, that's what I did that year. So here is a, um, one of my postcards. This one I did last year. This, my my theme last year was all about space. So I bought a box of 100 postcards and they all had photographs of uh, space, like constellations, planets, um, uh, and everything. And so this is what I wrote. Uh, would it, somebody care to read the, the poem? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, Epic Volcanic Plains, Mercury, is in ceaseless activity, rotates so slowly, 
yet is explosive in its planetary personality. Its planes shaped by its volcanic eruptions. What does this messenger tell us through these outbursts? Thank you, Carmen. So yeah, so uh, I drew inspiration from the image on the card. That is the surface of Mercury. And it, most of those postcards were taken with the uh, the James uh, telescope, the James Webb telescope, and so it's it was pretty amazing. So I, you know, I was thinking about it, and that had to fit on the back. And so last year that was my theme. Last year was all about space, and even though I um, I only had to write thirty one poems for one for each day in August. I got so carried away and I loved all these postcards so much. I ended up writing 50 of them and I just started, you know, sending them out to everyone. I asked everybody for an address. <laughs> I just kept sending them out. Uh, so that, that was one that I did. And here's another one. This was, uh, you know, when you're, when you're writing about it and you want to do a short form, you know, be in the moment, use present tense, provide details, concrete objects and a time and place this this one was a a poem that i wrote on uh, that year it was um in 2022 i wrote them all about galveston that because of, after we did our annual retreat in galveston with pirate poets uh i did the same thing i went into the murdoch souvenir shop i just bought a stack of postcards and i wrote one about uh the whole thing was all Galveston. So this is a, another short one that I wrote. And this was a base is uh, inspired by the Murdoch souvenir, souvenir shops. If anybody would care to read that one. So step inside out of the sun a while. We have shells, shirts, and sundries galore. Have a snow, have a soda, eat a snack, sit on a deck chair and stare out over the Gulf coast. Wind, waves, and fresh, salty air. Um, so that's what that's what I got inspired by that year was, you know, when I say to uh, be in the moment, you know, because these are very short poems, you try to be as precise and, uh, you know, create an image uh, to try to get people to be there. That's what I, I like to do is, you know, Hopefully you see that, you, you read that, and maybe you don't have the postcard in front of you, but you can imagine sitting there in those deck chairs at the Murdoch Souvenir Shop and, you know, feeling the salt air, uh, watching the wind and watching the waves. Does anybody have any questions so far? No, these are great. Uh, okay, so uh, this one, this was my very, very first postcard poem that I ever wrote, and this was from 2013, and when you do have a postcard, um, you write directly on the card, that's the whole, you know, uh, that's the whole sentiment and everything behind the uh, the festival, you write something new, I mean, there's no, there's nothing that says that you don't, you can't recycle old poems, but for the most part, you try to write something new and uh, inspired by the postcard. You know, you can have fun, you can be spontaneous, and you know, you just let your words flow. So this was, um, the this is called The Rains Came. The rains came, flooded the land quickly. We had no time to react, only to get out, but Brute wandered away following the scent of skunk. And this was inspired by a black and white photograph of a fence post that was submerged in water. And I, I uh, included the name of the photographer who took that photograph of that postcard. I'm, I'm very, very uh, meticulous because <laughs> I like to keep detailed information about what the photo, what the postcard is and who I'm sending it to and, or what it's inspired by. That's just so I can keep a uh, track of like, who I've sent them to and who I received postcards from. And then um, this one, these are, these are uh, some of two of my favorites. This person, uh, this is the same person. He just cut out a Dr. Pepper, you know, card and the Cheerios card, and he sent them to me. 
you know, uh, he sent that as a postcard. Here's, here's the postcard, you know, and as long, as long as, you know, it can fit, you can put a stamp on it, you can write. I've seen a full, they've, they've created their own. They, uh, what they do is some of them, they make their own cards and these two came from two two different people, but obviously in the same town because they had the same addresses. Uh, and, you know, some people, they hand paint them or they just send them to me from wherever. So, yeah, I have got, you know, stacks and stacks of, of these postcards going back 12 years. So I have like hundreds of postcards. Uh, and, and it's a lot of fun. And I have to say that August, the, the months of August and September are like my July, August and September, are like my absolute favorites, because I go to my mailbox and I'm just like anticipating what am I going to get this time? Who am I going to get a, a postcard from? And it really has become a lot of fun because, you know, it's postcards have kind of fallen out of fashion simply because email and the Internet and text messaging has replaced all that. So I think this is a lost art and I'm really, I'm really happy that this uh, particular festival has kept going as long as it has. Um, my, my theme this year was that I received as a gift, another postcard book, and it was all about, uh, these are all black and white photographs of different uh, poets of the last uh, contemporary poets of like the last uh, 70 years. And so this one is uh, Marianne Moore. And I, what I did this year with these postcards and I have, I still have some to write. <laughs> I haven't finished because <laughs> you know, sometimes life gets in the way, but um, I do, I do try when I get my list, I do my hardest and, and I try my best to finish and can and uh, do the postcards in uh in august but sometimes i don't but i want to finish them so this is marianne moore and i wrote this one a couple of days ago and what i did was i call i'm calling this theme this year uh the centos from the masters and so what i've done is i go through and i've been looking and reading like a lot of poems by these poets in these photographs uh and then I just take a few of their lines and I've been rearranging them and creating a, a poem, my own poem. And so this one is inspired and taken lines from different Marianne Moore poems. But I, I wrote, I climb out on the bank to experience the sun. Now I breathe. Now I am submerged. I do these things, which pleases no one but myself. So that's, you know... So I, I am borrowing from and, and taking from the masters, but I'm creating my own poem and, and work of art out of it. Uh, and so that is how um, that is how I've done the the uh, postcard poetry festival for all of these many, many years. And the way I see it is like if I don't get a chance to do anything else, at least I've come away with anywhere from 30 to 50 poems in a year. So I keep myself going that way. Is there anybody uh, that has any questions about the Postcard Poetry Fest? Ellen oh. had her hand up. Ellen, oh, yeah. Ellen had her hand up. I don't have a question about the Poetry Fest, huh? um, but I have two questions. Um, one is when you mail a postcard, about how long does it take to get where it's going? Well, I guess that depends um, because... Usually, I think it takes anywhere from mail is, um, and I think it takes a couple of, of like maybe up to about a week. Okay. Uh, because this poetry fest started in Seattle and it's based out of Seattle, Washington, I get a lot of Canadians <laughs> that I have to send poems to, and and I get a lot of uh, uh postcards from them too. So I go and I buy the global post, um, the postage to send it to them. But so, you know, some days in my mailbox, I have nothing. And then some days I, I will get like six at a time. And, I, and they're all coming from, as you know, like I said, from the uh, Pacific Northwest. 
and then it's uh, from overseas. So yeah, I guess anywhere from, you know, a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending. And uh, and that makes it nice. I, my worry is that the, the post office would kind of put them on the back burner. But like you say, you may get them at different times. And so you never know. It's a surprise. I like that too. Also, um, when you're putting artwork on these, um, you can basically do collage with yes. or without words. Yes, yes, you can. In fact, I think I have somebody who uh, sent me one that did a collage. I'm not sure where it is right now. Well, this one's hand painted, but I do have some that are collage, like this one right here. This one is a collage. So yeah, this one is is a a collage. And yeah, you could do you know the I was like I said, people they they hand uh they paint on them, they create collage. They just uh, send me, they print them out, you know, mm -hmm. on little, you know, just paper. Basically anything that's the, like kind of a more or less a standard size of a bowl, they'll, they'll deliver it. They will, uh, I mean, look at my, look at this guy. He did this one. <laughs> so. What fun. Yes. Yeah. Um, you uh, hold the cards up a little higher. I'm not getting to. Yeah. So like this one, he just cut out his. Cheerios uh, cereal box and uh, he you know he wrote it to me and he remembered me because sometimes the especially you start to real you start to recognize the names of people who do these year after year and you end up on you know sometimes similar lists so I'm you know kind of happy that I got Dr. Pepper last year and I got Cheerios this year and uh, Trula you've done this in the past haven't you Trilla, is she there? I know. I think. I, I think some of the people. Um, there's some from Houston that have done it in the past, and I'm going to go. Let's see. Hold on one second. Um, I'm copying the the link because registration. We go put it in the chat. Where's the chat? There's the chat. Um, registration for next year is open right now and, uh, registration usually closes, uh, I think a, a week before, like around July 4th. Now <laughs> this, this year for 2024, I ended up on two different lists and that happened because I registered early, probably in the fall of last year for this year's festival. And then I forgot. And so I registered again and I ended up on two lists. And so I was getting all these postcards from people. I'm like, who is the, who are these coming from? And how'd they get my address? So when I emailed the, uh, uh, the festival coordinators, they told me, oh, you're on two lists. And I thought, okay, not to worry. I had haiku that I had written every day. I had wrote a haiku in January. That was my New Year's, um, you know, write a haiku a day in January. So I just put those haiku on a postcard and sent those off. So I had those to, to send out and I, I have, um, uh, I had a lot of boxes and, and leftover postcards that I needed to send out anyway. So I ended up sending out because I feel like if somebody sends me a postcard, I want to, you know, reciprocate and send them one too. When, if I get a chance. So, so you have boxes of postcards that people have sent to you. So oh, yeah. you scan in all the postcards that you've written so that you have your uh, own record of it. Uh -huh. I, in the early years, I did not. But within the last uh, two years, I have. I started uh, taking a photograph of the postcard I'm sending with my poem written on it. And then, um, uh, so yes. So that way I can kind of keep track like before I was just taking like I said I was just making notes of like which postcard it was um I remember one year I don't know if I have the box here or not I can't find it right now but I remember one year I ordered a box of postcards off of um off of Amazon and it was a it's a company called Mara Marameco and I didn't know who that was but I, I thought the postcards were really cute and it had all these designs on them so I looked it up and uh, Marameco happens to be a 
design company out of Finland. So a lot of the titles and a lot of the uh, um, the titles and the things were all in Finnish. And so I went and I used Google Translate to translate what these words in Finnish meant to get an idea and get inspired by the um, by the by the card fronts. So that was a lot of fun too. <laughs> I've actually learned quite a bit um, in doing this festival, um, you know, and you 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 just get uh, really inspired, and I guess you just learn more about the world that way. I mean, you know, some people, like I said, I've gotten postcards from as far away as as Japan and Germany, uh, France. Uh, so it's a it's a worldwide global thing, and there's all sorts of people that you can you can meet this way, and exchange postcards with. Laura, do the postcards come in all different languages? Some do, uh, but for the most part, people uh, tend to write. I think I did get one postcard one. The one from France was in French, so I had to go and and translate it. But I think because the when the people sign up, they do know that this is mainly the United States, and and uh, so they do they do their best to uh, to make the poems in English. But yeah, and like I said, a lot of uh, so it's all based out of um, Seattle, and they do a festival up there. And they one year they did print an anthology of like the best postcard poems. They haven't done one since but um I'm, i always keep checking back and it seems like it's a very good very uh creative group and, and a great bunch up there in seattle the Ca the cascadia poets lab is what it's called they do workshops they do all kinds of um poetry and literary festivals up there so maybe one year after retirement i can get up there to seattle <laughs> and go to one of their <laughs> one of their gatherings um but like I said, it's uh, it's just been really great, and and writing writing the short form, it really um, teaches you about economy of language, and it really gets you into that practice of cutting out unnecessary, superfluous words, and just getting right down to the the essence of it. Like with the centos that I've been doing, um, like the ones coming up, for instance, this one I got. I'm going to write this one next. This is uh, Gary Snyder and Allen Ginsberg. So because there's two people in this photograph, I'm going to take lines from both of them. And one of the things I have found that's been a little bit of a challenge is that, well, you have to make when you do the centos, you have to make the word, we have to make the lines flow. And you have to have them make sense. Otherwise, it's going to sound kind of kind of crazy. Um, but, you know, that is uh, every year I feel like I just keep upping the ante for myself. And that just keeps me keeps me in that practice and keeps me going. Um, so there there's that. And uh, yes, so it wasn't until about. Yeah, it wasn't until about a couple of like I would say probably around 20, uh, maybe 2017 or 2018 when I really started getting getting my groove and really uh, now coming up with my own little theme that I do every single year. But you can do whatever you want. I mean, you don't have to have a theme. The whole idea of the whole postcard short form is just to write and just get your words out and get it flowing and just put them on that postcard and you know send it off so and then see what you get back <laughs> okay so do you yeah. pick who you're gonna send it to like or do you have like a list of names is that what it hey. has do you uh, them uh -huh. to? sorry for interrupting Sorry, uh, no. Interview. Do you send like okay? So you got someone wrote back to you. Do you write back to them, or I mean, you know, I'm just curious. It sounds like a really cool way of getting to. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what it is is that when you register, the the when you register and you give them your email address, um, 
they, the people that you're sending it to, the festival organizers, they add your name to a list. So it starts with group, it starts with group one. The first uh, 32 people on that list, that's group one. So then next people that register as the names come in, there's the next list, there's the next list. So I ended up on group five because I did it twice and I ended up on group, like I said, group 17. So as like, I, this is all my little notes of like who sent me, the R's mean I received a postcard from them, the S's are that I sent it to them. So yes, to answer your question, uh, Carmen, yes, you do get a list and you get a list of the people and their addresses, their names and addresses. Um, and, you know, I think uh, it's as many as, you know, the festival seems to grow. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you may end up on the same list and so we can send it to each other. Um, but we're, just remember that you, uh, that you registered, they'll usually, uh, send out the list. You are not going to get it until about, you won't get your list until July because that's when they start. They call it 56 days of August because people start writing the, their poems in July, but it goes on um, from July 4th, all the way to August 31st is the official, um, start and end date of the festival. But, you know, every now and then I'll get a card that'll trickle in and um, I sent some poems and some cards to uh, the Carolinas uh, in the last couple of weeks. So hopefully they'll get them. You know, you don't know, you know. Um, but yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, it is a lot of fun and I, I have really, really enjoyed it. And, and I, uh, I've been writing so many short form poems that, um, I feel like, you know, that's just becomes, it's like second nature to me now. Uh, and, um, and if for the, the writers here in the, in the group, you know, the long, long poems, I would love to be able to go and do that. I think there was one person who I saw on Facebook said that he did actually write a very long poem, but he put them and he spread them out all through all 31 postcards. And if you wanted to see the entire poem in its entirety, he sent you a link to which and when it was. Uh, so you can go read the whole thing. So yeah, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. You can write about anything you want. Um, you can, uh, you know, you could do a haiku, you can do a tanka. Those are all, you know, the short form poems, um, pretty much anything that you, uh, that you feel moved to write. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So that's the short form. So I hope some people, you know, feel like if you want to give this a try, if you want to do it, um, there's, like I said, there's a few of the names um, year after year that I recognize. And so they're, they've they been doing it probably as long as I have. Thank you, Laura. I could have done that a little bit earlier so we could see each other's faces while we were asking questions, but... <laughs> Um, but I got, I got so into it. Um, I forgot to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love the possibilities there, Laura. It really uh, had my mind spinning and, um, and I had a question like, do you miss it when it's not July and August? Like after doing it for so many years, um, yes. <laughs> you miss it when it's not that time of year. I do. I do. I really do. Because and and maybe that was why, you know, I went kind of crazy last year and I wrote 50 postcard poems and I just sent them out. Um, not because I was expecting to get any more back, but it's because I just didn't want to stop. You know, <laughs> I just kept sending them out, but I was running out of money to buy stamps <laughs> and running out It's almost time for Postcard Poetry Fest again. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Did anybody else have any, any questions for Laura? 
Could we see some of the postcards that you've gotten? You said you had a lot of them. Oh, yes. Um, okay, sure. Let me see. I just found, like, and the way I, uh, as you can see, this is my this is my filing system. I keep them with my list in these binder clips like that. Um, but, oh, here's some. This one was from, and I keep them all together. So this was, okay, so actually this is the group five people that I got. Same list, same year to this year, but this is the group five. So this person, uh, they, they kind of pasted together their little poem on here. And they have uh, the back. And let's, and this is just very, this is a haiku that she wrote. And it's very, very sh uh, short. Let's join together. Hearts beating as one, bringing hope now. And there it is. So there's that one. Mm -hmm. uh, this one with the gone with the wind and the uh, the stoplights. Um, and let's see. And I have, let's see, here's another one. And the, the poems themselves, this is a really nice one. This is says... Um, Tapestry tree trunks beneath a moon of glitter. At 46 years old, you'd think I'd outgrow such whimsy, but I find a delight in it more than ever. What are your tapestry trees and glitter moons, the delights of your life? So that's really nice and sweet. Um, but yes, I, I love some of these, you know, very short, very, here's a, here's an interesting one. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, this woman with the picture. Um, let's see. And here's someone who uh, they just they just wrote on it. There's no image or anything, but they just they wrote their their poem on the back. Uh, and you know, this one was from C Stacks. Da, 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 power of tides. I'm not sure. This one came from. Sometimes I have a hard time reading uh, the postcard, uh, the postmarks, but you know, I got this one. So yeah, really wonderful, wonderful. i um, trying to find uh, that one. And like this one was from, let's see, this was my, this was 2021. This was 2021's list that year. Uh, uh, so this one, this one, they sent me on Monet and the poem says, missing Monet, water lilies float in silence. Spring has gone unnoticed. Camille sits on her bench and wonders where I am. Her top headed neighbor whispers, pandemie, I mix colors and learn to paint. And that was really nice. So that was inspired by Monet's water lilies. Um, this person, she... They just drew, you know, something very simple. So, yeah, yeah, I love it. Like I said, yes, uh, I get uh, many people, a lot of creative people, they do like to do their collages and their paintings on these. Um, so, yep. Mm -hmm. and, and would you tell us, uh, would you tell us a little bit about um, how you use tarot cards as an inspiration for some of your, your poems. Yes, that will get me into my next one. Let's go into the tarot cards. So let me go back and let me go pull up that one. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So this one with tarot cards, I did this little presentation as well. Uh, so this one, tarot cards for self-discovery and transformation. So tarot cards have existed since the 1400s. And Italian royalty played a game called the Tarocchi using these hand-painted cards depicting works of Renaissance art. So these three cards right here are each a uh,
You froze, Laura. I thought maybe that was just me. Are y'all frozen as well? Yeah, I see. Uh, she's she. I can't hear her speak or nor move. Oh. Now she's moving. Okay, there you can go. hear. Um, my it says my internet is becoming unstable. Oh no! Oh no! You're coming in and out. So what I what I, I'm cutting cutting in and out. How about now? You're good now. Okay. Okay. So what I do with uh, with tarot cards, for instance, is the same the the artwork will inspire many, many different. Um, you know, you can be inspired by what you see on the on the card, on the image. For instance, this is the fool. This is from the Rider Waite deck. And what do you see in this in this card? Well, you see um, you see the person who's about to you know step off the cliff you see knapsack behind him so how what did i get i was inspired to write a short haiku for this card and i wrote this the other dog i, I wrote this uh just a couple of dates ago where i said white dog nipping heels bright sun warms carefree spirit fool leaps holds white rose willing to explore so that was my inspiration um, of writing a haiku to the tarot card, The Fool. In the short form, or when you're using tarot cards to um, it be inspired to inspire your writing or your poetry, again, very much about the time or the place and how you are in that moment. You can write directly to the card or whatever else that you are feeling at that, uh, at that moment. The fool in possibility, you know, he's about to step off and jump off that cliff. And where is he going to land? You don't know. That'll be your springboard. You can create an entire, we have an entire story or poem based on just the fact that he's you're going to just jump off. And you don't know, maybe you're going to fall off and you, um, maybe he's going to break his neck. <laughs> you don't know. But if he does break his neck, perhaps he gets back up again and he moves on. So that is how you can, you know, just take an image and you can create anything from it. And um, aside from the meaning of the card, which the meaning of the fool is that, you know, you're going to leap off into the unknown. You're taking a chance. You're maybe you've been um, just kind of scared to make that leap, but it's also a, very much about taking a leap of faith and maybe just uh, believing in yourself that you can, you could do this or trying something completely different in you that you've never done before getting out of your comfort zone. Um, and that, that whole thing of like, you know, you've got all your worldly possessions in that one. He's got all his little worldly possessions in that one little, you know, rucksack that that's on his, the bindle. I think it's called a bindle. And so, you know, you could just say, what is the most essential things? Like if you wanted to get inspired by how you would maybe write a story about this, if you had to pack tonight and leave for a trip tomorrow, what would you take and what would you leave behind? Um, so the 22 cards of Major Arcana depict what's known in the tarot story of taking us through the challenges that we face and the choices we make and what we discover about ourselves along this path. So if you wanted to use any of the cards from the, the Major Arcana, then if you were to go through the cards, you could do like the first seven you know, that's all about your personal awareness and yourself. And then the the next set of cards, the strength through temperance is, you know, the collective, your personal influence, what has influenced you or what you are influencing. And then the last cards, the, the devil through the world is all about the cosmic, the personal in your evolution. And, um, then this is, of course, the aces. And these cards, very much what you see here, 
you see just floating hands holding these objects. So you could, you know, take one of those. It's like, I'm going to take my sword. I'm going to go um, off and fight. I'm going to cut away all the, the things that are not, that are hindering me or, you know, causing me to not fully go out and explore my own thing. Um, and then, um, so today, you know, there's hundreds of decks that you choose from and poets and storytellers and playwrights, filmmakers, artists, musicians, and songwriters, they take uh, inspiration from the images on the card and they create their own piece of art. Um, so here's the major arcana from the Rider Waite. So any of one of these cards, you could take inspiration from and write um, from, from that. You can do like a persona poem. Like what would it be like to be, you know, justice holding the scales and um, and meeting out, you know, justice and fairness, or what it would be, what would it be like to, you know, the the tower card here is always kind of scary for some, because it depicts basically a tower that is falling apart. So you, that could be a springboard of a, a a personal story of like, you know, what was a something where you were just like you hit absolute bottom, and you had to build yourself back up again. Or, you know, if you've ever encountered, uh, um, you know, the, the challenge of, of <clears throat> the, the death card in tarot is a card of transformation. So it doesn't represent a physical death. It's more of a spiritual death of just things that just no longer are serving you or that you no longer um, need to deal with. And so you're ready to move on and you know, so what, what could uh, the death card uh, inspire in you to write about? So, um, so yes, it's very much about, you know, the taking the, the image in the card and then just letting yourself explore, you, writing directly uh, to the images or about the, you know, the sense of what is happening in in that like the it, the temperance card here with one foot in the water and one foot on shore so that's basically calling to maybe you feel like divided or you're in you feel like you're in just two different in two different realms um you know you could have your the 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 life that you show everyone else and then the private life that you have just for you so So those are those are all different things in um you know if we're talking about short form then again you know like i said I, I wrote that little haiku about the fool card just a couple of days ago and um and then you could just kind of continue going from there so yeah this is this is the the journey any questions I I have a friend who recently went to a workshop where you make your own tarot cards. Oh yeah, and, the, and it wasn't yeah. So it was like, uh, and and I've heard, I I should look it up, but there might have been like the cups of wasted time or something like that. So it was kind of like making a collage, and then you make up you make up your own term for it. Um, and and the same friend, she has, she doesn't read the tarot cards for other people, but she has different de types of decks, and she'll pick a card, and that's kind of her card for the day. Yeah, and she uh, kind of sees she sees the day through that one card, and yeah. I think that that would be a, a very interesting way to write about mm -hmm. uh, using the tarot cards. Yes. And um, there's lots of books out there and other things where you could get, you know, you can also uh, kind of go through that. And I like that idea of making your own deck um, because again, since this is your personal um, personal deck, then, you know, absolutely you can do something like that. Um, that kind of reminds me of, um, we did a, a workshop once with um, 
Scott Wiggerman, and he had us create what he called a PUD, which was um, a, your personal universal deck. And we just, we took uh, index cards. In fact, I have them here on hand. This is so funny that I you were talking about that. So I like this one. Uh, let's see if I don't see if you, if y'all can see this. Let me, let me stop sharing for a minute so we can, we can see this. So like this one, I, I drew this a long time ago, but see, this is fear on one side and this says uh, money on the other side. And what I wrote is, what is the root of money? Nothing to fear, but the fear of not having money. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, you can de definitely create your own. You absolutely can make your own deck and take an index card and you know that'll that can be a, a starting or a jumping off point um you know and i think i think a lot of times as as creatives we sometimes get stuck in one mode and in order to break free of that maybe you need to just get out of your comfort zone and do the things that are a little scary or a little um uncomfortable and you know, you never know where that's that's going to lead you. Uh, but um, you know, all of this has just served as as just I guess a great great inspiration, and it's helped me, um, I think, evolve as a as a person and just kind of delve deeper. And um, the the tarot cards is uh, something that I do, and I do pull a card every single day uh, just to kind of see where my day is going to take me and what I'm going to, uh, work around that day. Uh, but yes, I have, I have been inspired to write, you know, poems like based on tarot decks and, and the images in the card. And, uh, somebody has, let's see what's in the chat there says, Jean says, there's so many, I have collected decks for years. Yes. Decks in the style of different artists. Yes, the Alice in Wonderland deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have that Alice in Wonderland deck too, and it's it's really great. Um, but yes, uh, Salvador Dali had a deck that he drew that he the you know so this you know the the cards and the the whole thing above around tarot has inspired you know many many artists of of all types not just visual artists but you know creative literary artists and um many other people as well um and so you know even if you don't read tarot even if you don't uh, know what the cards mean that's okay because ultimately it's what is the image saying to you and what can you you know take as inspiration from it and um and then, you know, write your own narrative about it. Uh, let's see. Somebody else is in the chat. As far as the postcard poetry art, check out the writings. Oh, yes. Remedios Varo. Mm-hmm. This is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there any other questions about that? I wanted you to share with us mm -hmm. how you work in your, your daily writing practice when you're when the kids are in school and you have like your full-time very demanding job and yet how do, how do you work out your your day so that you can fit that in well um i set my alarm for 5 a.m and i hit the snooze button and i get up at 5 15 so by 5 by 5 30 i have uh this is just how i do this but i've just gotten into that practice by 5 30 I'm up here upstairs in my in my office and I just kind of start my my day with a meditation um and then you know I pull my cards and if I in I guess just the whole thing of pulling my tarot cards and then jotting down and writing a little bit of something what the cards tell me sets up the rest of my day and then when I get home in the evening um I I make it a point of just trying to at least carve out anywhere from 30 minutes to about an hour uh, that I dedicate to writing in my my personal journal every day that I've written in. I've kept a journal since I was 15 years old. So I have all of them, all those, all those writings. Um, 
and then you know like I work on the postcards and the and I've been working on the poetry um so that's that's my practice that's how I do things uh, I don't really I don't know I don't feel right because <laughs> I have to try to get it done and even at school uh, during my lunch hour I try to read like a poem um, I go to many of the websites and I try to read and I want to, and I like to read what other people are writing and posting. Um, and just, you know, that gets me through too. So does that answer your question, Margo, about the writing practice? I just, I just try to do it every day, every single day. Yeah. Because you know, I, yeah, different people, people have different ways to go about it. You know, some people just like block out a, a hunk of time and then don't do anything for a few days and then come back and do another hunk of time. Yeah. So even if that, I that sounds good. Yeah. Um even if I don't get a chance to uh work on like my craft of poetry, I at least write in my journal. And in my journal it's it could be anything as like, you know, just a very short like one pager, like at least, you know, I found this interesting. I found, you know, something I heard on the news, um, like something I read yesterday on NPR that I actually meant to go and journal about was the this language is on the verge of becoming extinct uh, in Chile. And, you know, there's a, a someone who's trying to revive it so that it does not uh, die. I think they talked about a woman, I think in Peru, who was like 103, and she was like the last lay woman left on earth that spoke this uh, specific type of language. And with her, the language has now died. And this was just like recent. So uh -huh. it, it gives me, you know, pause. And I, I like to think about that, about, you know, language and how our language you know, we take it for granted, I think, sometimes. And then we realize that there's, you know, other languages out there that are being, that are spoken. And, you know, it just gives you, you know, things to think about. Um, and uh, I, you know, very much like that's how I do it too. And that's, I, that's also sometimes part of my practice is hearing words in other languages and then going and, and, and finding what they mean. And so I try to add that sometimes into my writing. You know. Yeah, that sounds great. So. Hmm. Hmm. Do you are there any other questions hmm? from folks? Thank you, Kitty. Well, Laura, th thank you so much for coming out. I mean, this was this yeah. was great. I just love seeing all the the postcards and hearing how you you know, how you do this. And it's, it's fascinating. I don't think I've, I've talked with anyone who does, who does the postcard. So it's, it's fascinating. Very good. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. This has been wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Thank Giving us lots of good ideas. Thank you. Yeah. I had forgotten about the Oracle folk Oracle decks that I have. Um, so, and I was using them with my creative writing students. Um, so thanks, because I pulled them back out. I'll have some fresh material for my little after school club <laughs> this week. And you know, Oracle decks are actually great to, to do. Um, there's a lot of great Oracle decks. Have you, have you heard of the Wild Unknown? No. That lady, she has, um, let me go see if I can find it real quick, if we have a little bit of time. Um, Kim Kranz, and her is um, Kim. I love her stuff. It is really good. It is. It's really good. Kim Kranz, I think her name is. And she did the, uh, Kim, hold on, let me find it. It's called the Wild, Wild Unknown is her tarot deck. And, but she also has this other Oracle deck. Let me see. It's the wild and known, but I'm trying to think, oh, I know which one it is. Give me, uh, give me one second. I'll be able to grab it. It's this one. I'm trying to think of what was the name of it. The archetypes. When you were talking about um, your, uh, you were talking about the Oracle cards. It's mm -hmm. this one. This is a fabulous, fabulous deck. 
So, um, and this is awesome for, for creative writing. Students, prayer. And I love these. And I was actually writing poems based on these cards too. And so this is um, a great deck to use. And Thanks, this Jenna. one is, <laughs> yeah. you bigger. see this, oh, this is called the prayer. Yeah. So, you know, just a simple thing like that, the prayer, what, what does this inspire you to write? You know, a personal prayer, a prayer to the gods, uh, something that you pray for, something that you pray that maybe you want. <laughs> so the, these cards are beautiful and they're wonderful. And there's all kinds, um, like this one's called the box. So I'm gonna put this in the in the chat too. I was trying to find this is the uh, the archetypes, and there it's a wonderful thing. And when you were talking about with your with your student uh, archetypes, yes, here it is, the wild unknown art types deck and guidebook so that's what it's called it's called the wild unknown i'll put it in the in the chat for you all um but yes so those are those are cards so basically oracle decks you know tarot card decks any kind of really any kind of card any kind of deck i once did a workshop where i was also teaching how to write to loteria you know loteria cards too um but you know so yeah you can you can get insp inspired by um you pull a card and that could that could be also part of a writing practice you pull a card from whatever deck you have on hand and write to it you know you could start with uh concrete concrete images and you know from there you move into the more abstract um but yes that's that's also uh, much, uh, many people take inspiration from that as well. Uh, Kim Cran's Archetypes Decks is what it's called. So uh, we can buy off of Amazon and it's it's a wonderful, wonderful deck, you know, but I'll put it up here. Um, is there any other any other questions? He just inspired another idea I'm going to share. Um, these would also be great, um, a great jumping off point for making art as well. Like that's something I learned in the collaboration with working with other people's words, um, uh, working with my two collaboration partners really added layers of meaning to my abstract art. So like starting with ideas from a deck to add meaning and layers and a jumping off point for collage or for art or whatever. Um, yeah, but yeah. just like, I'm rapidly taking notes because you planted some exciting seeds today. <laughs> um, that's great. And you know, um, when I have my, my personal journal and then I have like my poetry journal. So I just put together This, the things um you know so every yeah. time i unspotlight just, you you have something really cool to share as a visual <laughs> so, could you show that journal one more time because i'm uh, you were small this, uh, this is my poetry journal um i'm old school and what i mean by old school i write everything by hand um and i keep i like these notebooks and i have like stacks and stacks and stacks of them going back years but you know uh like i said it's, it's very very messy but this is my process <laughs> and it makes sense maybe not to others but this is my process and this is how i i work it out uh but you know, i uh you know i take my my poetry my poetry journal and you know on the inside covers i just take stuff and just glue them in there and you know sometimes i i um uh, um I don't know if anybody is familiar with uh, Frida Kahlo's diary. You know, Frida Kahlo did a lot of that. She did a lot of collage. She did a lot of drawings and she did a lot of writings. Um, they printed the book 
uh, many, many years ago and I had to have it. I had to buy it. But, you know, that's what she did also is that no one ever thinks of Frida Kahlo as a writer, but she actually wrote also poems and she wrote, you know, snapshots of her life and that she kept in these in these diaries and these journals of hers. And but most everybody just knows her for her paintings. Um, but I think, you know, as creatives, we we can create all kinds of things. Um, I'm not, I don't consider myself a very good artist. But what you were talking about is, you know, being inspired by others artwork and just making your own, however, um, basic it is, <laughs> you know, because I think it's all it's all valid. It's all your your interpretations. And it's all your artwork. So, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, for for our 30th uh, celebration next Thursday night, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a week from a week from Thursday. We'll, we'll each be given a postcard, basically, a note card yeah. to decorate for yeah. like this, this paper quilt. So, uh, yeah. So okay. but that, this kind of gives me some ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Great. I think one year, one of my early years, and I should have photographed all them, but I don't think I did. Or if I did, I must have lost them. But I did hand hand draw um postcards you know but very very simple <laughs> little line drawings um but um yeah so well this has been so great uh i hope all of i hope everyone got you know some inspiration and some uh ideas of um uh, you know your jumping off point and where you're going um to go from here Awesome. Right. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Thank you all. That was Thank a double all. whammy with the postcards and the tarot card uh, presentation. We got a two for one. Yes. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Well, if, if there's nothing out, no other questions for Laura, our heads are probably spinning. If you're like me, you're thinking of lots of other ideas. <laughs> um, and uh, we also like to, at the end of these member meetings, give members a chance to have celebrations, announcements. Um, oftentimes people have a win, some, something they've submitted that has, um, made it to the eye of the public through some form of a submission process or have a show coming up. So um, I will transition us to that. Given the number of people we have. Yeah. And Laura, just soak in all the compliments in the chat, please. Thank um, yeah. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Yeah. I think we'll be celebrating you with every like spark of idea that pops up in our heads for hours after this. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Um, I didn't want to shift away too fast from you getting that celebration. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Um, but if anybody wants to um, share something, just keep in mind, you know, just take a couple minutes, um, no longer than that, just so everybody gets a chance um, that might want to. Um, you can raise your physical hand or do, you know, the cool um, using the tools of Zoom to do like the cute little. <laughs> yeah. All right. I see Lane's hand. So we'll start with Lane. Yeah. Make I'm sure just... you got unmute. I just want to let people know about one of our members, mm -hmm. uh, Patty Berg. She was in a terrible car accident about two weeks ago. She's still in the, she's That's in a good. rehab facility right now. She might get to go home later this week, but she was hurt pretty badly. I love it. I love so it. Uh, if you have uh, a I chance, <laughs> send her a card or something. That would be nice. Thanks for letting us know, Lane. Well, George is, George is out of town. He had to go do a bang. Um, 
Okay, whose hand did I see? Was that you, Catherine? Yes, yeah. Catherine. Go. So I have a little celebration. Uh, I sent off a piece. I sent off three pieces to Hardy and Nance for their uh, hundred years of surrealism show, which is this Saturday night, five to nine, over at Hardy and Nance, and they took one of them. So. This is my first uh, my first juried show. I've done Art in the Avenue a couple of times, but. Oh, yes. Ah, I was like, really? <laughs> so. Exciting. That is exciting. Gladys May. <laughs> yes, I have a, you probably can't see it. I have a. Um a class or presentation at REI on November the 9th from uh, 1.30 to 3 at the REI. And it is on our calendar. It's so many things that's happening on November the 9th. It's just a busy day, but it's in the in the midday. It's from 1.30 to 3. And it is this, it, it has the, the QR code, QRC code that is in our calendar. I'd love to see some of y'all out. I'll be talking about Kilimanjaro, uh, but not just that, but I also use a poetry uh, and a, as a part of the narrative of doing that presentation. It's, it is a big story event and it's all, all, I'm so happy it's all over the whole REI national website. So I'm like, oh my God. So I'm really excited that uh, they, they, they are supporting it. And so if you're interested, it is going to be on November the 9th. From one thirty uh, to three, and that uh, promises to be very exciting. It's going to be an exciting presentation. So thank you, that's it. Awesome, thanks, Gladys May. Who else? Yes. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Who else has something to share? I think. Let's see, where'd you go, Deidre? Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm like scanning. There you are. Good. I wasn't sure if this is appropriate here or not. We had, and let me just shout out, we attended um, Brooks' presentation on um, blackout poetry this weekend. And to me, it exemplified and personified what Wivla is. And in the course of it, I mentioned um, that I um, teach financial literacy and I just signed up to teach a course and it starts on... Uh, the 28th of this month, it's the Mondays, it's like 6 to 7 p.m. from 12 to 2. If anyone is interested, they can reach out to me and I can give you the information. It's a volunteer class. I don't charge for it. It's something in the community and it's open to everyone. So I share that. I, I say when we get our money right, we get to do more art and more writing. So I think that is a very, very important um to lift up. Thanks for bringing that to us and making that available to people um, at, at no charge. Because sometimes you need that in order to get going in the right direction. <laughs> Who else? Anyone else? Okay, I don't see any more hands. So um, let's give another round of applause snaps and claps and whatever you got um that was amazing laura um thanks for thanks for bringing your your creativity your discipline um and um yeah all of the inspiration you brought tonight so you're muted <laughs> you're muted laura i, I see your lips moving I said, thank you all very much for having me tonight. And uh, this has been great. I mean, I could talk for hours about the tarot and the postcards and all that, but um, <laughs> but thank you all. And um, um, Archway Gallery readers are meeting this Thursday. So I will be there um, with my with my Centos of the Masters <laughs> poems to oh, cool. read. So yes, I will be there. Yay. Great. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to wrap us up. You all um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening. And I hope we get to see your beautiful faces um, next week at our party. Okay. It's deadline to RSVP on the 17th. Okay. Is that, okay. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That, that'll okay. give our caterer enough time to know how much 
food to prep. So yeah, if you can RSVP by the 17th, that would be great. Okay, it's gonna All be right. great. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.